I had never been a person who is into pornography all that much. I mean, I like men, I like sex and all that, but I guess uh, that enjoying it in real life 3D was enough for me. So <laughs> I just didn't find myself paying attention to the 2D version. Give me the warm flesh of a real guy any day and you can keep your magazines and videos. Yeah. <laughs> Tell it. Then in the uh, dot-com boom around the turn of the millennium, I got a job at an internet company, one that was in the business of web filtering. What that means is censorware. We were the ones who prevented you from shopping, gambling, or yes, surfing for porn on your employer's time. This company's customers were organizations like schools or corporations that wanted to prevent their end users from visiting sites of ill repute. So your pain was our product. The job was to find and capture into our database all that pornography that y the rest of you were not allowed to see. We did that in part by Googling around using appropriate keywords. The nastier, the better. The office itself was quite the normal cubicle farm, all beige and white and gray, staffed by us clean-cut, college-educated people. One of the few things that was different about the place uh, was a big warning sign on the door into our room, which cautioned all who dared to enter about the offensive content ahead. <laughs> and if you were offended by pornography, well, it was definitely on our computer screens. <laughs> Not long after I joined, our supervisor was training a new guy in how to Google to find more hardcore porn for us. <laughs> With her booming voice, I could hear her say, shaved pussy. You have to ask for it by name. <laughs> True story. Apparently, he'd been typing in things like hot babes, etc. Not good enough. <laughs> right. We were awash in porn, just drowning in it. I learned that the human demand for pornography was like a tide that never ebbed, but just kept coming. <laughs> you might think that we were the big evil corporation, but we felt more like the little Dutch boy with his finger in the dike trying to hold back the flood. <laughs> and not really winning. This was the heyday of internet porn, the boom years when something like one in five sites were pornographic. <laughs> there was just no way for us to keep up. I remember going to bed one night and all I could see on the ceiling above me was a great big pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Not just the quantity, but also the nature of the porn was eye-opening to me. It just ran the gamut. I mean, maybe uh, purveyors of pornography were trying to differentiate themselves in a saturated market. <laughs> Or maybe they knew that their patrons were beyond jaded with conventional porn because they provided not just blondes, brunettes, and redheads, but also orgies, BDSM, and bestiality. <laughs> Did you know that the proper spelling of bestiality is B-E-S-T, not B-E-A-S-T? <laughs> Actually, we had to know the common <laughs> misspellings for porn words because Google knew those common misspellings, and so did the webmasters of sex sites. <laughs> I could imagine some guys out there who were motivated to be just barely literate enough to be able to surf for porn. <laughs> Occasionally, you'd come across something like penis being spelled with two N's. I mean, think about it, people. Wouldn't that rhyme with tennis? <laughs> Before this job, I hadn't heard of the term MILF. <laughs> Mothers I'd like to fornicate, you know. <laughs> and if you surf, uh, search uh, for MILF online, you'll find that there is a group in the Philippines somewhere, the, the Moro Islamic Liberation Front. <laughs> 
who must be gnashing their teeth and shaking their fists at us Western degenerates <laughs> for giving them a bad name. There is a place in southern England that will indulge your sexual fantasy to regress back to your infancy. They will treat you like a baby, and by this I mean they will put you in diapers. It's called infantilism. This place even has oversized furniture, such as cribs, and those kind of slings that let your legs dangle down to just touch the floor, so, so pre-toddlers can scooch around. The website had photos of a full-grown man, hairy legs and all, <laughs> scooching and bouncing in his oversized baby furniture <coughs> and soft knit bonnet. <laughs> For an extra fee, you can hire a nanny to be very, very strict with your bad baby self. You would burn with humiliation at how helpless and dominated you were as the nanny spanked your behind, which presumably was not as smooth as a baby's butt. <laughs> she would wear some kind of prosthetic bra filled with formula and make you nurse to the last <laughs> drop. I hope it was formula anyway. So. <laughs> I imagined truly oversized jugs indeed. Uh, However, there were no photos for that. Phew. <laughs> now, there are all kinds of fetishes out there, uh, some of which are famous. You know, you've heard of the foot fetish, the leather fetish, high heels, that kind of thing. Uh, and then there are some so-called fetishes which seem surprisingly non-sexual, um, such as long skirts, dirty sneakers, or videos of people brushing their teeth. <laughs> I mean, that's the best <laughs> fetish you can come up with? Tooth brushing? <laughs> there are sites for furries, as they are called, uh, people who like to dress up in <coughs> various plush animal costumes <laughs> with some strategically located openings to facilitate sex. Also, the, there are those who modify their stuffed animals in order to have sex with them. It seemed like rape of the innocent to me. <laughs> My coworkers found this job a strange experience too, and we were not above making some fun out of it. Our supervisor with a booming voice organized a day at work where we came in dressed as our favorite fetish. <laughs> How many workplaces have that? Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. <laughs> Fortunately for me, who tries to maintain some semblance of professionalism at work, I could just wear my oldest pair of sneakers and a long skirt. <laughs> I brought along a little stuffed animal for my furry. After all, as I said, these were real, legitimate fetishes, and I had references to back that up. One, one coworker, a uh, scientist programmer type who normally wore blue jeans and flannel shirts, came in that day wearing all black leather, head to foot, in a way that framed his round butt. <laughs> he zipped up the big metal zipper on his jacket with a noisy flourish. So yes, indeed, I was able to see some of my coworkers in a whole new light. Over the years, improvements in artificial intelligence made it so that porn could be detected and categorized automatically, and eventually we did not need to view porn anymore. Those of us who survived the inevitable layoffs did so by cultivating our technical skills. A few years after this transition, one of my old coworkers who'd been transferred to a different department stopped by to say hi. We were reminiscing about the crazy bygone days and she said she wondered if we had been permanently scarred psychologically <laughs> by all that exposure to porn. I responded by uh, raising the impact that it had on my self-esteem to be viewing so many models who were better looking than myself. All the boob jobs and the airbrushing, you know, a natural woman just couldn't compete. <coughs> A couple of years ago, I was diagnosed with a cancerous tumor in my left breast. 
I underwent a mastectomy, so now I have a big scar where my breast used to be. Seeing myself in the mirror, one-breasted and bald from the chemo, wasn't easy, and it could have been extremely depressing. But you know what? Actually, I thought I could be quite popular on the internet looking like that. <laughs> I wasn't just I wasn't just telling myself that I truly deeply knew it based on my <laughs> years of work experience there would be a constituency out there for me I mean if so many men could find it attractive for a woman to be rooting around on the ground on all fours dressed up like a pony <laughs> then surely I could get laid if I needed to No doubt I would actually be more in demand than ever before. I could have my own pay-per-view website. <laughs> so if all that exposure to porn could end up putting a smile on my face as I imagine myself faking a German accent and wearing a dog collar as befitted my new look, it was all worth it. Oh, and uh, those idiots on the internet who can't spell the word vagina, <laughs> they probably couldn't find it either. That's Heather Campbell. Thank you.